Hi, this is Kendrick Johnson with TheMedSchool.com. Today we're going to do a quick review of headaches. And uh, we'll start with uh, epidemiology, just a short note on the epidemiology. Go through a differential and discuss some of the most important types. And then we'll talk about how you work these up and how you treat them. So headaches is a problem that causes over 150 million lost work days per year. This is specifically migraines that cause this, and, and uh, the other headaches can, can play into. But of course, migraines is going to be one of the biggest reasons for lost work days. So there's lots of different types of headaches. This list is not even close to covering uh, even a third or a fourth of, of the types of headaches that you might see. But it will cover the, the most important ones, and these are the ones that are covered in uh, the two review books that I'm using. So, um, so they're uh, in theory they're going to cover most of the ones that are going to be on the boards. And the top two, the tension and the migraine headaches, uh, make up around 90% of all headaches uh, presenting to a primary care setting. So, uh, so if we know those pretty well, then we'll have a handle on a lot of them. And then the others, uh, there are some others that I included here just because I thought they were important to mention. So let's start out with the tension headache. This is the most common type of headache. It's uh, going to present bilaterally in most cases, whereas the other ty common types of headaches like migraines are usually going to be unilateral, so just on one side of the head. People describe it as being a band-like sensation, like something's uh, around your head constricting it, usually a dull type of pain. These will get worse with stress, but they're not going to usually get worse uh, with uh, like light or activity um, or loud noises. Uh, so they are, in, in most cases, uh, going to be uh, fairly constant, but they will wax and wane. That sounds like a, uh, it's backwards. Um, so they do wax and wane, but uh, they're not going to be affected by activity. So in depression, uh, this is usually the, the chronic headache that is associated with depression. And a lot of times you'll see a pattern where it's kind of affecting the forehead and the back of the head as well as the neck. A lot of these are going to be associated with neck pain. And, uh, and some can be triggered by, by neck pain, uh, neck stiffness, and that type of thing. So that's going to be a common theme that you'll see. And a lot of these will uh, improve with, uh, with massage to the neck and things like that. We'll talk about that in treatment. But, but uh, there's, there's been a lot of ties to musculoskeletal neck problems and tension headaches. So the way to diagnose this is just to make sure it's not anything else, especially temporal arteritis, which uh, has um, has somewhat of a similar presentation. I, I, the, it's just the, the major one that we need to, to rule out if, uh, if this is on the differential. So to treat it, we need to reduce stress, whether that be by uh, massage, or um, by um, meditation type techniques or any stress management like biofeedback can have a big effect on tension headaches. NSAIDs and acetaminophen are going to be your first line medical treatment and you can use triptans in these but the triptans are usually associated with migraine and some of the others that we'll talk about. So I'm throwing temporal arteritis in here, not because it's real common, uh, but because uh, I just mentioned it, and so I just want to clear it up if anybody's wondering what it is. So this is going to usually present unil unilaterally. So uh, they'll feel it on one side of the head, and a lot of times it's going to be kind of a temporal pain. You know, they feel it in, the, in their temples. And... Uh, They'll also have some some jaw claudication, you know, where they're they're chewing and their their jaw hurts or gets real tired, and um, that temporal artery is uh, is often visible and tender. And uh, around fifty percent of these people also have polymyalgia rheumatica, 
So you, uh, you may have some muscle pains associated with this and, and you want to start thinking about temporal arteritis. If, they f if you find temporal arteritis, then work them up for polymyalgia rheumatica. If they already have polymyalgia rheumatica, uh, then make sure you're keeping an eye out for temporal ar arteritis. Um, it's extremely rare under the age of 50. The, there are cases, but, uh, but uh, you want to make sure that this is on your diagnosis for anybody over the age of 50. Um, I didn't mention here uh, sight uh, vision loss under the presentation, and I should have because sometimes that's going to be your presenting feature. Hopefully not because uh, a lot of times this is permanent blindness we're talking about. If you have a new onset uh, of vision loss in somebody over the age of 50 and they're having a, a headache like this, then you're definitely going to go straight to temporal arteritis on your differential. And um, the diagnosis is uh, you want to use an ESR to, um, to rule it out. So... So ESR is, is pretty sensitive. It is not specific, obviously, since it can mean just about anything. But if they have a if they don't have an elevated ESR, then you usually can rule it out. And uh, but you need to do a temporal artery biopsy to know for sure before you even get to either of those tests. If this is high on your differential, you give them a high dose of prednisone. So you don't wait for the biopsy to come back to make sure because if they've already lost vision in one eye, you want to save the other eye. And uh, if they haven't lost vision yet, then uh, you want to make sure that they don't. So so go ahead and give the high-dose prednisone if this is on your diagnosis or your differential diagnosis. And it's going to help. Uh, high-dose prednisone can help treat some of your other headaches as well. So it's not a bad thing to give, especially in some of the more serious headaches. And uh, the major complication is blindness, and it, it generally is permanent. So it's, a, it's an important thing to have high on your differential and, uh, and get it ruled out quickly. So back to the common ones. Migraine is, a, is an extremely common problem. I mentioned 150 million workdays lost in a year, uh, mainly due to migraine. And... Um, it's very uh, much associated with a family history, and 80% have a family history of it. This is uh, usually on one side of the head, and uh, we usually associate it with an aura, um, like scotomas or uh, uh, tachopsia and uh, photopsias, rhodopsins. Um, but uh, but th that's only going to be in 15% of your... Uh, migraines. Now, I, d I didn't uh, know what any of those uh, things I just mentioned meant, so I'm going to just uh, tell them to you. Uh, scotomas are like blind spots. Uh, tychopsias are jagged zigzag lines, and those are pretty much uh, pathognomonic for a migraine. Sometimes people will have these. In fact, I saw a patient yesterday who had this uh, um, these jagged lines but never had a headache. So the diagnosis was migraine without headache. Uh, and he would, he would get these and, and really no other symptoms. So um, that's, the, that's the tychopsias. The photopsias um, are like shimmering lights, and the rhodopsins are, are just changing colors that you see. Many of these are associated with nausea, and many are associated with photophobia. So those are uh, some things that can help... Uh, uh, give you the diagnosis of migraine. They will be triggered by uh, food and odors, fasting, stress, menses, sleep disturbance. Uh, really, a lot of things can be a trigger for it, but but basically anything that uh, alters uh, um, alter that affects your senses uh, can, or, or hormone balances or anything like that, can be a trigger for a migraine. The diagnosis is done clinical, uh, clinically. So, so if you uh, add up these things, you know, if they have a family history, if they have an aura, you can almost uh, uh, make the diagnosis just with that. Um, but if they have a photophobias, 
and uh, I didn't mention this, but it's usually a, a more gradual onset, and uh, it's usually a chronic problem. So those things put together, I'm actually not aware if there is a classification system for migraine. I'm sure there is, and I should have looked for it. But uh, look that up and see if there's a classification system to nail down this diagnosis. But you'll probably be pretty sure just by seeing these features. The treatment, you want to start by avoiding the things that you know are causing this. So you might want to have your patients to be keeping a journal of what things might be causing their migraines. A lot of people will probably know. Um, but, uh, but have them keep a journal so they know what causes their migraines. Um, you can use NSAIDs to start with um, and triptans. Uh, metoclopramide can be used, especially when associated with nausea. And uh, anticonvulsants and TCAs and beta blockers are, can all be used for prophylaxis, especially in people who have a real problem with them. Tumor wasn't included on in any of the review books that I noticed uh, for the workup of headache. And that surprised me because, you know, that's kind of the first question that patients are wondering is, uh, is this a tumor and am I going to die? And uh, so that's why I included it here is, is for the patient's sake and for, for your sake when, when a patient uh, is asking if it's a tumor. Uh, of course, we'll be doing a We'll be doing a video on, on brain tumors later, but, but the reason that I think that the review books don't include it is because this is only going to be less than 10% of your uh, tumors have this as the presenting feature. So usually you're going to have a lot of other features, uh, like the seizures, um, nausea, vomiting, diplopia, um, increased in intracranial pressure, uh, visual abnormalities, uh, neuropsychiatric symptoms, and uh, it's more more common in in older adults, but uh, but it can uh, affect children as well. And um, and uh, the headaches are often when uh, when uh, people wake up so early in the morning they'll they'll have these headaches or they um, can in some cases can wake up in the middle of the night with a headache. So if you want a, uh, if you want a, a couple rules for uh, when you start thinking about a tumor in a headache, because, I mean, you still have this 8% that that's the only thing that you're going to present with, then first of all, if it's 50-plus um, and if their headaches come when they, when they just wake up, those are some big cues for thinking headache. And then, of course, if they have any of these other things, um, recent weight loss I didn't mention, but that, that's one too, any of your B symptoms. Um, but if you, have a, if you have a suspicion for tumor for any reason, um, and if it doesn't quite fit any of the other headaches that we're talking about, then you might want to go ahead and get a, a contrast CT um, or MRI. And the treatment we'll cover in a different video. Um, another one that, uh, that is not a big feature in review books under headache is intracranial bleeds. And uh, that's probably because a lot of times these are going to be associated with trauma, and so you don't, you don't have it uh, worked up on the sa in the same way. But, um, but you can have um, subarachnoid hemorrhages, for example, without, um, without any recent trauma, though... Uh, it is most commonly associated with, with recent trauma. So if they say it's the worst headache of their life, um, if they have neck stiffness and photophobia, then definitely they're going to get a CT, uh, a lumbar puncture if the CT is negative, um, and four-vessel angiography. And the, the treatment is to get a, a neurosurgeon involved. There's also intracerebral, subdural, and epidural uh, hemorrhages, Again, usually associated with trauma. Um, you can have uh, aneurysms present with uh, um, with a uh, slow onset headache, but again, a lot of these will be associated with other symptoms. So, uh, other neurological symptoms. That's when you send them uh, to get further workup. 
if uh, if they're having any type of uh, you know diplopia, um, galactorrhea, just anything that anything else that would assess um, that would uh, suggest a a mass in the brain. Of course, you get it worked up. Tridremenal neuralgia. I actually don't remember how common this one is. Uh, I've never seen a patient with it, but it's extremely painful. And uh, it, uh, the presentation peaks at 60. It's an episodic thing, and a lot of times people will know when it's coming. They can kind of feel it. It, it has uh, a type of aura that, that is associated with it in many cases. Um, but, but it's extremely painful, and it's going to affect, in most cases, the uh, a large uh, distribution of the trigeminal nerve. So, you know, the trigeminal nerve is, is basically sensory to the face and to uh, the cranium so so it's going to a lot of times f affect the face and the treatment is uh, going to be carbamazepine, phenytoin, uh, clonazepam, valproic acid. TMJ disorders are uh, associated with chronic ear pain, headaches, jaw stiffness, and uh, almost all of these are going to have jaw issues with it, and so it's not going to be too hard for you to uh, see that it's uh, associated with TMJ. And uh, facial pain, jaw and joint noises, these, these shouldn't be too hard for you to recognize, um, but they can cause a diffuse headache. NSAIDs, relaxation, stress reduction, muscle relaxations, uh, relaxants are all helpful. A lot of these people will need a, a dental appliance to help them keep their jaw uh, stabilized and in the right position. And some people, you'll, they'll need a surger, surgery. Um, there's oral surgery as well as uh, dental surgery that can uh, help this. And um, just to, to end with, I wanted to make sure that uh, some of the emergencies were covered. So if you have a headache plus uh, one of these symptoms, then think about uh, the, the emergency uh, problems that you can have. So if you have a headache plus red eye and corneal clouding, uh, intense eye pain, um, think about glaucoma and get an uh, emergency ophthalmologic, uh, uh, ophthalmologic uh, uh, consult. Blindness, myalgia, jaw claudication we mentioned as, as temporal arteritis. And then any of our bleeds or, um, or tumors um, or any mass effect in, in the brain, um, these are often associated with nuchal rigidity, vision changes, seizures, nausea and vomiting, and neurologic deficits. You can include, um, you can include uh, meningitis or encephalitis in this category too. These have these kind of symptoms. So um, if you're in a primary care office and they present with any of these things, uh, you probably send them, send them to the ER. So um, that uh, picture on the front page uh, was by Sasha Wolf from Grand Rapids and uh, she was nice enough to share it in a Creative Commons license. If you have any comments, uh, any ways that I can improve this video or any requests for other videos, please let me know. My uh, email address is kendrick at themedschool.com or you can leave a comment below the video. Thanks very much.